so, you will turn me into the IRS if I don't agree? My brother Stan was a factory representative whose job was to set up dealerships to sell mobile homes. He was on the road a lot and made good bucks. He was the bad boy of the family and a player. He was married to a wonderful woman that the whole family loved. Unfortunately, he met a woman on the road and he did end up filing for divorce. It was not a friendly divorce. His soon ex-wife's attorney called him up and indicated that he was asking for alimony ETL, based on his income that year, approximately $350,000. My brother patiently explained the ebb and flow of sales and attempted to compromise on a five-year average to include years where he made only $150,000, yeah, I know, only. The attorney continued that he knew Stan had cheated on his taxes. My brother interrupted and asked how he had cheated. The attorney told him that while my brother wrote off his considerable business experiences, he knew that he was reimbursed under the table by his employer and that this information might find its way to the IRS unless he accepted his demands. Stan said so, you will turn me into the IRS if I don't agree. Yes was the answer. Stan said he would see him in court and hung up. My brother then contacted a tax attorney and brought in five years of records. A week later he picked up the results and found that he owed a little over $100,000. He then drove over to the local IRS office and indicated to a rather puzzled employee that he wanted to turn himself in for cheating on his taxes. After going through the tax attorney's findings, he asked what my brother wanted to do. Stan said he wanted to pay it along with any penalties due. After a while, day or two, he was called in and told the full amount was, hell I don't know, north of $100,000. Fine said Stan and wrote a check for exactly half of it, then, pointing at the 1,040 form, said get the other half from the person that consigned this document. His soon-to-be ex-wife had to cash out her retirement, but the divorce proceeding went much better for my brother without the IRS leverage her attorney thought he had. I did learn early on in life not to play cards with Stan. Stan is long gone and details are remembered from almost 20 years ago, so forgive legal or procedural errors. Follow up to original post, after reading all the comments up to 150, both for and against Stan I felt a follow up was due. After the divorce and subsequent marriages by both parties they all got along pretty well. The two children involved shared time with both parents with no friction. Both kids have grown into great adults with wonderful kids of their own. When the daughter was married in a South American country Stan was invited but was too ill to attend. As my British friends would say, Stan was a right bastard. However he and his ex-wife pulled it together enough to not poison the kids who loved both sides in this affair. Now to the comments. One of the war stories from a 22-year career in US Air Force finance was of a GI. With over 20 years in who resigned. Personnel office, you mean you want to retire, right? And start getting 50% of your base pay? Not as great as it sounds, since a significant portion of your compensation is not in base pay. Nope, GI. Wanted to resign. Enlistment was up, divorce was in process. Spouse would get awarded part of the retirement, but if there's no retirement pay, spouse had no entitlement beyond base shopping privileges and a few other things. Sometimes, divorce is ugly. Definition of cutting off your nose to spite your face. Jesus, people are stupid when it comes to divorce when hate slash spite gets involved. Sometimes spending that money now will save you more down the line. If he was going to get hammered for an income that is $200,000 over his actual five-year average income he would be broke by the end of the first year. He also stripped any leverage his ex though that she would be able to use against him. Yeah, it's cutting off your nose to spit in your face, but it's better than that coming to light in court and having the IRS come after you after the fact vs you being up front and saying I need to pay what's owed. Without knowing what the financial burden, or how this revelation of tax cheating would play out in front of a judge, I have to say it's a smart move. That's weird because even if they both signed, he's still just as liable as she is for the other half until after the divorce. But I'm no attorney. If proceedings have started and they filed jointly, 
it likely be considered a shared debt, and he cleared his half. The other half becomes a negotiating point, she'd either be on the hook for it, or have to make concessions. It seems like it would be a shared debt until the divorce is finalized, since he doesn't have his own money yet to pay his half. Everything is still joint ownership. If half is now paid, the remaining half of the debt isn't hers, it's still theirs. But I'm no lawyer. It also seems unlikely the IRS would open and close a six-figure case in a day or two, but I'm no IRS agent, either. Plot twist, Stan dared his brother to tell the internet how wonderful he is. Stan's brother complied by writing this post. OP replied. Hmm, writing about cheating on taxes, cheating on the wife we all loved is telling the internet he is wonderful. He handled it in a way that worked for him and screwed her. You can't read well. I think people just generally want to side with the person doing the malicious compliance, which is hard to do here. At all, I don't think this means what you think it does. Perhaps you meant etc. Sorry but Stan looks like a shitey person, and it isn't really malicious compliance, it's just malicious. Haha <laughs> I agree, I felt like the story just made me sad because the bad guy wins. It happens and it's interesting to actually encounter it in a story. It makes these posts slightly more realistic. Your brother was a right bastard, that's for sure. First, he cheated the government, then cheats on, in your words, a wonderful woman who was loved by everyone in your family, then refused to support her with an amount that was fair, attempting to lowball the settlement. Thank you. What an abominable twat. So, he cheated on his wonderful wife, and as a last duck you he screwed her financially thanks to his own tax evasion, just cause her dumb lawyer was trying to get her a good settlement, not the sub but Stan was a huge ah. Uh. One of the plot points in the movie Married to the Mob is that the wife signed the tax returns. I know her husband is dead, the FBI uses this as leverage to force her to become an informant I'm a little skeptical of the story simply because you would think that a lawyer would recognize that his client was going to be vulnerable for that as well. I'm sorry if this turns out to be news to you, but getting tax, legal, medical, financial, or any other advice from movie plots is not a particularly wise or credible way to go. What? I was totally planning on killing my ex-spouse, who framed me for their murder, and then escaping prosecution because of double jeopardy. Are you saying I can't do that? So your brother cheated on his taxes then cheated on his wife, and when she tried to sue for alimony he wiped out her retirement savings in retaliation. And he's the good guy in this story? Do I have that right? I don't think this story is painting the brother in a good light, it's simply showcasing MC. The IRS is always willing to collect money that is owed to it. They don't care who pays the bill, as long as it's paid. And because they each signed the tax forms all those years during their marriage, then Stan's wife is absolutely on the hook for half of it. It's a marital debt. Stan's wife had no way around paying half of the back taxes and penalties. Tax accountant here. Stan was attempting to amend his tax return, S, but it's not a valid amended return until both spouses sign the joint amended return. The IRS cannot and will not accept a return or amended joint return not signed by both. No valid return, no liability. I'm not calling BS, but it could be mistaken recollection. Or BS. Reminds me of the story floating around about the guy taking a seriously lesser paying job, just to avoid paying his ex-wife anything. Yeah, he got a job as a greeter at Walmart or something. 
couldn't handle the pressure of being a top-rated psychiatrist anymore, got his psychiatrist friend to confirm his diagnosis, pretty sure it was on slash r slash pro revenge. In the US a spouse can file for innocent spouse relief if he or she was not aware of the actions of their spouse. Per the IRS by requesting innocent spouse relief, you can be relieved of responsibility for paying tax, interest, and penalties if your spouse, or former spouse, improperly reported items or omitted items on your tax return. Generally, the tax, interest, and penalties that qualify for relief can only be collected from your spouse, or former spouse. However, you are jointly and individually responsible for any tax, interest, and penalties that do not qualify for relief. She had to know about it, because otherwise her attorney wouldn't have known about it. I doubt a tax judge would believe that he suddenly decided to come clean without pressure, so she'd have a hard time proving herself an innocent spouse. Also, her attorney would end up disbarred and possibly prosecuted if the matter ever reached a court.